Welcome to Keith's Pie Tutorials, I'm Keith Ellis. Today I'm going to be expanding on my last tutorial, which is how to install Raspbian on uh, Raspberry Pi um, headless. So it's useful for uh, Model A where you haven't got any flip port um, using the um, serial console cable. I did make reference in that tutorial that I couldn't get it to work with the noobs um, software. I've been playing around with it and I've now got it to work. So if you want to set up your Pi headless and you don't fancy messing about with the um, Raspbian distribution and you just want to use the noob setup, this tutorial is perfect for you. To start with, we're going to set up our SD card. Now if you've already got a noob's SD card, then um, you can skip this initial part and we'll talk later about how we modify the, the card to install headless. But I'm starting from a blank SD card, so we'll go into Disk Utility and erase it. We've now got a blank SD card, so we'll quit Disk Utility. And next we'll head over to the raspbian.org website to download the Noobs software image. Click on the Downloads tab. And right at the top there we've got new out of box software, recommended Noobs, and I'm going to download the zip file. So click on that and we'll let that download. So Noobs is now downloaded, we can see that in our downloads folder there. So we'll open up that folder and then what we need to do, we're going to usually copy this to your SD card but before we do that we're just going to make a couple of um, changes. So we want to install Raspbian so we're going to select every folder in the operating system folder here with the exception of Raspbian and delete them all. Now we're going to open up the Raspbian folder and we need to edit the flavors.json file. Now there's two flavors Raspbian can install. There's the standard Raspbian flavor, and there's also the boot scrape, straight to scratch um, flavor. So we're gonna select this code block here, um, which talks about the boot to scratch, and just delete it. So we need to make sure we select the whole block from opening bracket to closing bracket, including the comma. We'll delete that, get rid of any spaces. So the only block in there is the Raspbian distribution. And we'll save that. Now that's done, we'll head back to the root folder. So, and then the last file we need to edit is the recovery.command line. We need to open that in text edit or your, or your text editor. So I'll just search for that here. Because it's not the default to text edit. There we go. Open it up in text edit. Then we just need to add one last option to the end of this line. So go to the end of the line, space, and we'll add silent install, all lowercase with no space. And we'll save that. So that's all the modifications we need to do. I did that before we copied it to the SD card so it doesn't have so much to copy because we've deleted all them Raspbian images, or sorry not the Raspbian, all the other OS images. So now we'll copy that to the SD card which will take a little while, I've sped it up here. Right, that's copied over now. So we'll eject the SD card we can put that in our Raspberry Pi. Next we need to connect our serial console cable to the Raspberry Pi. Um, don't plug it into your, your computer yet, just make the connection to the Raspberry Pi first. Once you've done that, make sure the pins are in the correct place. Connect it into your USB port of your computer. So at the moment your Raspberry Pi shouldn't have any power. We're then going to type our screen command, screen space forward slash dev forward slash cu dot pl and press tab to finish the rest of the command and then we just need to add the baud rate which is 
115200. So the screen command is now waiting for our Pi, so we'll plug it in and you'll see the Pi boot up and it will seem to stop at this recovery login. You don't want to touch anything here, you don't need to log in. If you look at the status LEDs on the Pi, you'll see it flashing away indicating the SD card is um, active. Now this will take, I don't know, half an hour or so, I think it took about 27 minutes for my Pi. So you just need to be patient, wait for this um, to finish, go and grab a cup of tea, whatever you want, and then come back, and hopefully if all's gone well, you'll be met with the login to Raspberry Pi text, as we see here. Now I've obviously cut all the, um, the waiting out, so you, you would have had to wait half an hour or so. So we'll log into the Pi, username Pi, Password is Raspberry, and as before, we see uh, um, the text there asking us to run the sudo raspy.config. So we'll run that. I've uh, selected option one to expand the file system there, and you see on the new system, you don't actually need to expand the file system, it's already expanded. So we'll go through. Um, I always change my password, I never keep it default. Um, so I've changed my password there. And then I think there's one more option. We'll just go to advanced options. I think this is possibly already set the standard, but I'll just change it just to make sure. We'll go to advanced, uh, SSH, option A4 there, and make sure SSH is enabled. So we'll enable SSH. Finish up the Raspberry config. And we'll do a sudo reboot to reboot the Raspberry Pi to make sure all their changes are set. So the Pi is now rebooted. So we'll log on. Remember to use our new password if you've changed it. We're still logging on through the console cable here. So now I'm going to edit the etc slash network slash interfaces file to enable our wireless. So we'll type sudo space nano space forward slash etc forward slash network forward slash interfaces enter. And that will open up the interfaces file in the nano editor. Now I've covered the network interfaces settings in my previous tutorial in quite um, a lot of detail so I'm just going to go through here quickly. For reasons I don't know on the Mac particularly well um, I need to copy my interfaces file from a text editor. If I edit the, the interfaces file within the screen command it doesn't seem to work so I've got a text file here with my um, IP address, I'm, I'm going for a static address, IP address, I've got my SSID and my router in there and I've got the password in there. So I'm going to copy that, I'm going to use Control K which is cut in nano to delete every line in the interfaces file and then Command V to paste in my, in my interfaces file and you can see I've got my SSID in there and my password, you'll need to change that. And I'm setting up my IP address there 192.168.54.20 so we'll do control x and enter to save that and that's our interfaces file set up so we're almost there now so we'll do a, another sudo reboot and reboot the pi and that will reboot now and hopefully the network um, dongle, the wireless network dongle will kick in when it reboots. So you can see it's rebooting there. And then I'm not going to log in. What I'm going to do is exit the screen command. So I'm going to do Control A followed by D, which exits the screen command. now back on the terminal on my Mac and I'm going to SSH into my Pi so SSH space Pi at my IP address 192.168.54.20 
and if all's going well, I'll just type yes at this command to accept this fingerprint. Type in my Raspberry Pi password. So there we are, we're logged in. So it was just a quick tutorial there to show you how we can use the noob setup to set up the Raspberry Pi in the headless format. So we haven't used a keyboard, a mouse or a monitor to do this. It's all been done through um, the serial cable and through SSH. But I hope you enjoyed that. That's it for today. And um, please keep an eye out because I've got some more tutorials planned for the future. Thank you.